Welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner, and today I'm going to be talking about Nth Degree by John Gustafero. Before I do this review, can you like and subscribe? Check out onlinemagic.co. That's my membership site. I would say it's good on bias, so please have a look at the Trustpilot reviews. I keep it at $9.99 a month because like this month I've been very busy, so I haven't put as much content on, but actually I've just put a whole course on sponge ball magic from beginning of the pro, so that ain't bad, is it? And there's about 900 other videos on there, literally. So have a look at that, live sessions. We had Lord Harry on the other day. It was such a great session. You get so much for your money, and it's all good quality stuff if you can bear me for 900 videos uh, with the respite of a few other people. Do please follow me on Instagram, Steve Faulkner, TikTok, Steve, S-T-E, uh, like the beginning of Steve, I've got a lisp, so some of you are going to think I said F for Freddy. Uh, Steve Faulkner, without the V-E on TikTok, because this stuff's going down really well, um, off nth degree. I've been doing a, a few tricks, I've learned every single trick in this book. I was going to wait till I I'd put every trick in the book on social media, but that's ridiculous. That's just my obsessive ADHD brain um, avoiding actually doing this. John's book, One Degree, came out 13 years ago, I think, which is terrifying. It feels like about three years ago. And this is a sequel to that. He's been very prolific. He's put a lot of stuff out. It is persistently good quality. Consistently, even. Good quality. Persistently sounds a bit bad, doesn't it? Um, good quality and it, with this i kind of thought how is he getting where does he come where does his ideas come from and he talks about that in the essays i'll say there are i think it's five essays in here which talk about creativity um seeing things from a different perspective as do the trick seeing for, uh, things through a different perspective no i'm not going to do it i'm not going to go for all of them no i'm not um i just thought has he got an essay on seeing things from a different <laughs> probably i don't I think i'm getting confused with the trick so what John is very good at, which is a whole point of one degree and nth degree, is taking existing plots, because let's be honest, there aren't that many that are really good, and he's covered all of them in here, and just elevating them even more. And he genuinely does. What I'll try and do is go through each chapter to give you a kind of overarching feel of what we've got. But I think it's important to say that when people say, oh, this elevates it. Sometimes it really doesn't. Sometimes they think a trick's elevating it because it's got some story that they've shoehorned into it or they've added a thing that just doesn't make it better at all. It's, this genuine is stuff that he's tried and tested. And I know he has because I talked to him about these tricks before the book was finished. You know, tricks that he performs regularly. And you can tell this is proper worker stuff. A lot of books claim it. Most... Of, I reckon 10%, you know, you would actually do a gig with this, every single one of them. Imagine that involves three tricks, all three of which I've put on social media. Have a look. Invisible Opener, absolutely beautiful production of poker chips, a deck of cards and elastic bands, and you can just use coins or whatever. You can adapt all of these tricks. They're really adaptable. So if you don't chime with John's um, product, uh, presentations, because they're very him, you know, he's very much a personal development kind of guy, then it, they all are blank slates for you. Well, I've just seen them. That's psychological, isn't it? Just did a bit of mentalism on myself because one of the tricks is called blank slate. But you can build on these because they're not over-complicated, convoluted plots. They all play really well. Invisible opener, that. Um, Perception plus and blank slate. Have a look online. Um, the tricks with the blank cards and the blank deck that I did. The... Reverse fan, I don't mind, I think that's okay to say that, that you need for one of these tricks, killed me to learn. And that's why I wanted to go through the whole book, because I wanted to up my magic, I felt this would improve my magic, and I thought, well, I've always wanted to learn that, and it, for days and days, I just wasn't getting close. You know that lovely feeling, and it always, it happens when people learn the spread fan, or the thumb fan, and the pressure fan, it's just, you just can't get it, and you don't know why, and then you get it, and you still don't know why just persist with it. It's such a beautiful thing when you get it. And the, the response online was great. I know some people say you know, social media doesn't matter, but you can, you can get an idea from other magicians. Um, and of course, lay people, because they're the important ones. Let's, let's remember that. 
Um, Perception Plus uses this lovely ambigram thing. Again, you'll see it where you change the jacks for the aces and you use this, again, this one degree variation to create this visual thing, which is adds an element of surprise and theater, I think, to it. Um, introducing the aces, all I'll say is there's four brilliant, brilliant ace productions. Again, I've done most of them. Uh, Royal Transpo is like a, an ace production transposition and they end up with a Royal Flush under their hand. But the I went out and did self-checkout, which is this mind-blowing. If you like the work of Danny de Ortiz, you know, this mind-blowing thing where the spectators seem to do nearly all of it and they end up dealing their own four of a kind. But I did that trick a couple of months ago. I read it and I performed it without practicing it. I'm not recommending that, but it is so hands-off. It's pretty much self-working. There is audience management, which I'm not bad at, but I just completely flawed someone with it. And it, again, it goes against this thing of, oh, it's too much process. It's, the process is what makes it. If you think I'm lying, Natalie that watched the trick that's on the video has the perfect way of putting it at the end. Give like it. that one. That one's really good. Yeah. Because of all good. the nobbing about with the cards. Yeah. <laughs> Eye catchers. These are really striking, two of which use blank cards and the cards that you've got to adapt. It will take you minutes. When I say adapt, I'm not talking arts and crafts, I'm just talking arts. And in my case, in, in a very basic way, you'll need a Sharpie. And for some of these tricks, like I said, you'll need, you'll need to get some blank cards, some um, blank back, black faces, things like that. Very easy to get. But if you don't want to do any of that, I was only going to do the non-gimmicked tricks in here because I looked at the pictures and just went, they're really not for me. And then when I performed them, just totally were. But I think Stranger Sandwich is the best trick in the book for me. It is such a beautiful thing. And again, takes this idea of the Jokers finding the card, but adds this, these couple of moments, especially the M1, that is so magical and really easy. I just think it's beautiful so worth definitely as you know so many people say but the price of the book alone for that trick i think and these all have a a lot of these have a feeling of a trick you were buying individually by the way which isn't saying much with some of the tricks that come out individually but you know what i mean double vision is the the trick that i did with a vanishing deck online that i think is one of the most difficult most challenging tricks in the book because of angles and because of making it look good, I found it really, really hard to allow. I still w don't, wouldn't feel comfortable doing it live, I don't think. But with video, I was a bit, you know, more comfortable with it because I could control the environment a little bit more. But, but well worth learning just to sort of get your hands doing certain things that they won't be used to doing. I think it's, it's really, don't, oh, when I say that, I don't want you to, to overlook it. I think you should do it and then you can also adapt it as well. Uh, Bermuda GPS, the the great tricks where you adjust the cards. I'm trying not to go for every single one of them. Four score, the the sort of packet tricks, but again, the the first one, the the other mates is is a self working trick, which is so good where they do all the dealing, you know, they and and they you tell them what card they've looked at in any hand that they choose, you know, and then you. Let me think about this. I don't want to get it mixed up with another trick. And then they deal out the other mates or or I put the other kings and you can you can adjust it if you want. But they've you found their you've named their card and then with the other packs they deal out spell out the other kings and they deal out the the, the kings. Sorry. <laughs> I was all you nobody was going to know what I'm talking about there. It's really good. Uh the he's got this um display oh i can't remember what display is called i'm so sorry john it's called the smooth criminal display where you you show four four cards but it's not a count but you display for uh, a, a king hand the king to someone 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 didn't have to do all that did i um and they're they're not necessarily all them but it's very deceptive it's easy i'd say it feels bold because it's easy and it's so it's so um powerful and with these two tricks on one of them you've got four members i like the fact you've got four people or, or um three, yeah it's four people each holding a small deck of cards 
you hand each one of them a king they put it in their their deck and you say to the first one which deck do you want to be, the king to be in which one do you, and you'd go for this whole procedure which is a great mentalism procedure and they apparently choose which of the decks of cards that are going to have their kings on top and they vanish from their cards again yet again another uh, very concise way of explaining that anyway there's a similar trick called hide and seek to that where you do the same display and the spectators hide the aces and they've switched places tailspin twist is like roger smith's maxi twist which is a kind of twist in the aces but again with this kicker of them being blank cards and the cards changing uh from one aces to kit i'm i'm going to massacre it, it was a while ago when i did it but i will be putting that on on social media too Hands on deck, change maker, hybrid triumph, biddleless redux, reign of terror. Reign of terror is one of the ones that I didn't learn. It's based on Woody Arrogan's trick where the spectators tear up cards. So I can't really talk about that much. It is brilliant, but I just didn't get around to it. Um, if you know the biddle trick, which a lot of us do, which is very powerful, um, somebody chooses a card, you show them five cards. Don't tell me what one it is. I'm going to go through them all. Uh, one of them vanishes, in this case, from under their hand in this adaption of doing this which is so brilliant and is face down in the deck but without importantly using the slight which isn't that difficult but it kind of eradicates and streamlines it and makes it really almost instant it's just brilliant and again i'm telling you this because it takes existing tricks makes them simple but no less powerful i think that's really important with a lot of this stuff i think many of us kind of see the sort of eradication of slights sometimes is a weakness in this case and in many cases here it genuinely isn't but the triumph they've got in here or they john has got in here involves the spectator doing most of the moves for you and i really mean that nearly all of the moves are done by the spectator including the bits you know, we usually have to do and they do their own triumph which again is is just wonderful right spectral another self-working trick pretty much which I performed at a gig the other day, which at, at the, the spectator apparently does everything. And the card that they've pretty much cut to and thought of and then put back in the deck ends up face down in the, the deck that they've closed themselves and decided between which two cards that, that face down card that has vanished from the deck appears in. Sorry, that makes also no sense. But you'll get the basic gist, won't you? Um, Blackjack Fever I didn't look at. Um, Book of Clues is just a brilliant way of using dual reality very simply to enhance a routine that could so easily be spectator cuts the aces. It's, it's not the aces, but it's just got this, again, this one degree shift that is enhances it to a completely different level, I would say. And crystal clear... Brilliant use of the Omni deck, stunning, and it's in play from the beginning, so you don't have to do what I usually do, is pretty much look over there while I do a very clunky switch, uh, which I get away with, but it isn't pretty. You wouldn't want to see it on video. Um, is another way of using it, which they think it's a totally different trick, and it just comes out of nowhere that this, this the rest of the cards, other than the four races after a transposition, are clear. It was a clear block. Omni deck's brilliant. If you don't like it, you're wrong. And you think everybody's seen it, they haven't. And even if they have see it, seen it, they still love it. Uh, Mystery Wand is a almost reminded me of Simon Aronson Sideswiped, where you've got this lovely thing you pull out, like a, a kind of tacky playing card with lots of stars in it and two white ends. And you say, oh, I can make a magic wand out. This is like make your own magic wand. You put it back in your pocket, do a trick. The card with a different colour back, that's important than the rest of the deck, ends up being the card that you make the magic wand out of do that with <laughs> oh, God, so much no sense oh steve you've been learning these tricks for so long you're doing a terrible review right let's try again they choose a card from a blue back deck you've shown them a little kit they can make a magic wand out of they choose a card it's lost in the deck they make the magic wand roll the card up put the ends on it do that probably and then the card isn't in the deck and they unfold it, unroll it, and that is their sign card. Thanks. But it's importantly, it's a different colour back and it's got all these designs on it. Sorry, John. This is <laughs> mess, isn't it? Sublime in all is way better than I'm just about to describe it because I learned it ages ago and I can't remember the details. But basically, you use a kind of um, this sublime messaging idea 
I think this is one where there's a colour changing back in it. Where you look, listen, I haven't done bad, all right? There's a lot in here. Where you spread the cards at the end, the card that they've chosen, uh, the deck changes colour, I think. The card that they've chosen is the only one that says, don't pick me on it or something. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right. But the point is, even though you still have no idea what's in this book, I have learned every trick. So I can accurately tell you that there are tricks in here for not beginner beginners, but, but pretty much no sleight of hand in that are just as miraculous. That self-checkout is just mind-blowing and they do the whole thing pretty much. All of these moves and these things of, you know, changing parts of the deck and all the things he's added to it do not add time for time's sake or clutter or cleverness to make it look clever. They, they usually take away time or add the feeling of magic because this can't possibly happen. And this, I forgot to mention the trick, which I do think is important to mention because it's a good example. Um, it's change maker, right? So the standard trick, which is absolutely brilliant, of course, they choose a card, you turn it over. So is that your card? They say, no, you put it on there. Oh, it's gone. And then you pick it up and it's changed into their card. He's pretty much done that exact same trick, but added this idea of a rubber dub vanish, but not as a vanish or a, or a delayed vanish, which is brilliant because it totally takes the heat off it. I know it's kind of delayed anyway, where he's added two moments of magic, the naming of the card, and the card go into the pocket. Actually, loads of moments of magic. But the important bits are, rather than just doing the switch, they're convinced you've got the card. It then vanishes, and it's the card that ends up under their hand with some more stages in there that I'm not going to tell you about because it would ruin it, or if I'm being totally honest, can't remember. But I do perform it a lot. It's just gone out of my head. But the reason I'm telling you that is that they're all things like that. All, there'll be a lot that you already kind of do and can do that you'll that may be part of a routine that you'll think, no, that is a whole routine in itself. It's a really good book. It's for all levels. Even if you do a quarter of the tricks in it, it's going to be way worth it. I'll even say two of the tricks in it. It's going to be worth it. And with the essays, I think it's a, you know, for that little book, there is way more in this than there is in, I'd say, 80% of those books on that shelf. Not that they're not great, but this is just pretty much every trick you're going to be going, oh, I could do that. And you will be able to do it with a bit of practice. You might have to put a bit of work in, but that's all right, isn't it? Because we're magicians and that's what we do. Thank you very much. If you're still here, well done. Uh, I think that was a bit shorter than the other one that I did, but if you've got any questions, which you will have, one of them maybe, what was all that about? What did you say? Uh, I will be putting more of these tricks on social media. I will, of course, answer questions and um, I'm doing the podcast again, so I'll answer questions on the podcast. If you've got any questions at all, steve at onlinemagic.co. I will answer any questions on the podcast that you have about anything, unless it's offensive. Uh, and I might even still do it then. So do that. Follow me on Instagram, Steve Faulkner. TikTok, Steve Faulkner. Uh, Facebook, Steve Faulkner. You can follow me there. And onlinemagic.co. Thanks very much. The next one will be more concise. Thanks, John. It's a stunner. Take care. Like and subscribe. Cheers.